Pursuit of greatness begins at first light. Who will be victorious? Only time will tell. With the top four separated by only nine points and with less than half the season to go, this may be one of the closest pro drivers championship the majors has seen in quite some time. Challoner, Walker, Waring, and Chin are all realistically in the hunt, but tonight could wind up being decisive. For the first time ever, the Majors tries its hand at off-road short course dirt racing. But not only does this provide a great unknown, it's a notoriously chaotic style of racing. Will it bite one of our title hopefuls? Let's find out soon as we get ready to watch the Majors Crandon World Cup. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peek, and with me in the booth tonight is Adam Lindgren. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Crandon is perhaps the venue in the United States for trophy trucks. Let's head to our track eye to learn more about what makes this place special. Welcome to Crandon International Raceway. Located just to the west of the small town of Crandon, Wisconsin, it draws the best off-road racers in the country to its famed grounds. This is mainly due to the world championships being held here since the 1970s. With the full course clocking in at one and a half miles with eight turns and a shorter version sporting one and a quarter miles with four turns, it has some rather unique features. Perhaps the most famous is the land rush starts in which the drivers are lined up in a single row and sent barreling into the swift right hand turn five. In fact, high speeds dominate a good portion of the circuit and create some impressive jumps throughout. But there are a couple distinct hairpins, such as the final turn into the finish line, which often creates great fights right to the end. And then there's the tight turn four on the long course, which is flanked by long, fast runs. This makes finding a good entry and exit not only difficult, but critical to a good lap time. Expect some beating and banging, and the plethora of bank corners should certainly offer plenty of different lines to get creative. But above all, expect drivers and fans to have a great time at America's premier short course off-road racetrack. Adam, this is the first time that GSRC is gonna get to kick around in the dirt here at Crandon. So why don't you tell our viewers what to expect with these trucks around this place? Well, absolutely. Crandon, much like the other tracks featured this round for the majors in the other two regions, is an extremely unique and exceedingly technical dirt road course. And our drivers will be tackling it with both the, of the Lucas Oil off-road trucks, the Pro 4 and the True, Pro 2 today. First up is the Pro 4 truck, a 900 horsepower beast. This all-wheel drive behemoth is a relatively tall and heavy chassis that requires a lot of finesse to take around the high speeds of Crandon. Look for the pole sitter of the Pro 4 trucks to struggle getting purchase off the line for the land rush and struggle to keep the speed to the apex of five on that launch as well, as the way of the power of the Pro 4 can knock it offline quite easily. Next will be the Pro 2 truck. These 700, 800 horsepower monsters are rear wheel drive and much closer 
slung to the ground, but the difference in drivetrain slows these boys down a touch through the corners, making for some very exciting racing. Look for them to be squirming through turn four, trying to find purchase with their rear tires throughout the race. Both segments of tonight's race will be intense, to say the least, and whoever can survive the land rush and turn five in each of the heats will have a great chance to be one of the 12 progressing to the feature tonight. Now, as we look at the pro points, I already mentioned at the top of the show just how tight it is here. And considering it's 50 points for a win, as much as I make a big deal about it only being nine points from first to fourth, Driscoll still only 35 back. Uh, from there, it's pretty tight as uh, Espy and Quinn are just outside of it as well. So you have quite a few that are mathematically in it, but we're starting to see a breakaway with a few major players. Uh, here just past the halfway point. We also have a pro teams championship. Adam, how's that going? I mean, it's extremely close as well with Forge Racing Pro 1 only 15 points ahead of Kinetic America's Pro 1. That is so very close for the team's championship with those 50 points on offer. And each of these teams have those three drivers who are scoring points for the team. So that's a lot of points that can be scored per round. And with only 15 points separating those top two, that's really close. Evolve Simsports is not out of this either. Only 56 points behind is a round that's bad for either of those top two teams. Then Kinetic America's Pro 2, only 11 points behind them. Dog Bear Red a little bit far out to make it for the full-on title to this season, but they probably could score a top three if they tried really hard. Now, for today's event, uh, since we mentioned it is unique, well, this is just how unique. We've got two different sets of racing, and each time has their own heats. We're going to have two heats per, and then the top 24 each time will go on to the feature and uh, you can see they've got open setups and there are no cautions out there. So each nine lap race and every heat and uh, every feature, you don't want to be making mistakes. You don't want to wind up with damage because frankly, Adam, there's no coming back from that. No, there's no coming back from that, but when it's the thing about damage is that they're not going to have to worry about an incident cap either. So these drivers are going to be able to beat and bang as much as they'd like. And that's probably not a good thing for our championship hopefuls who are probably hoping for more of a clean race. So another thing that we're learning is that it's going to be half points per uh, half of the points are going to be given during the pro four round and half of the points given during the pro two round. So it's going to be 25 points to the winner of the pro four trucks and then uh, 25 points given to the winner of the Pro 2 trucks, and that's how they're going to split out the points for this round. Right now, they're in the middle of qualifying, solo qualifying out there, 10 minutes to set uh, four laps, and their fastest one will decide the grids for each of the heats. Watching uh, Kurt Crum currently out on track, and unfortunately, it looks like that lap not going to do much for him, so we look to Isaac Snyder around this very slow and tight final hairpin that takes you to that finish line. And it uh, looks like Snyder going to be good enough for seventh place that time. But we were noticing in the warm up, Adam, we've got some ringers. This is such a distinct style of racing that a few uh, non championship drivers have come in and have shown them how it's done. Absolutely, that's the top four at the moment. Luke Knupp, actually one of, uh, I, we believe, 14-year-old uh, truck driver, uh, one dirt truck driver, jerk, uh, just dirt driver in general. He's actually got quite a bit of uh, pedigree himself underneath his belt for such a young age. Doing a great job out there right now, currently holding that uh, provisional pole. Cameron Pedersen in second position, and Connor Berry, as well as uh, Christopher Plumley and Josh Edmondson and Keaton Swain. Six ringers have come out here tonight and are already at the top of the charts. Not really a surprise, but it's going to be interesting to see how that affects the championship and how that affects the racing tonight, because our championship hopefuls are going to be tucked in the battle of the mid pack, which, especially when you're starting with that land rush, could be a real hazard to them no doubt about that and dirt racing is so distinct in fact that one of our drivers that took part uh in the euro split ryan meyer uh, in the 915 coming over to uh race here as long with snyder as well and the uh, bombshell racing team truck so uh, actually i believe both of them bombshell drivers as we see brian barnes for dog bear red uh, coming across that last lap not quicker, unfortunately. So Nup still holds that provisional pole. 
and is out for his final lap. What about Josh Chin? Finally sets a time. He didn't on his first three. Must have gotten some laps deleted for contact with some walls, and he puts himself into seventh. Yeah, absolutely. Contact and uh, off tracks are really easy to get around here. You clip that grass just a little bit and you'll be getting an off track in these trucks. Also, any sort of contact with the wall, while normally there's about 12 incident points in the official races for uh, Crandon out here, uh, these trucks, let me see Cody Retzloff going off track there, trying to reset, get a better time. Um, with the no incident limit, these truckers are going to be able to beat and bang a little bit, but that's not going to help them in qualifying. They're going to have to avoid any sort of incident or any sort of uh, loss of control because that will affect their qualifying time and nullify their lap. Now, keep in mind with how close the championship is. We just saw Warren cross the line, only 21st, and he's on his final flyer now as we see Thun Horst go a little bit quicker and up into 16th. That'll bump Warren down to 21st now. Warren starting that far back and having to struggle his way forward could make life a little bit difficult. Uh, he doesn't want to give away too many points. And I'm, we're just getting word that Isaac, uh, that, uh, sorry, Brian Meyer and Brian Barnes have both completed all, are competing in all three of the rounds this weekend for the majors, all three of the regions. So pretty impressive stuff for those drivers. You've got to be exhausted trying to learn all of these different disciplines because the different uh, vehicles that are being driven and the, the tracks that are being driven across the three regions are vastly different in technique and style as well. So as we see Cody Retzloff, who has yet to set his time, he's one of the ringers who's come in tonight and he needs to get some a time on the board. Otherwise, he'll be starting pretty far out to the outside for that land rush. Pearson still holding the provisional pole right now as we saw him cross the line on that last one. Unfortunately, it did not count for him. Warring's final lap puts him into 10th that's a little better he'll be happy about that i'm sure as uh thunhorst still coming around for his last one he's in 19th and uh, the former champion is going to want better than that i'm certain but his last lap's not going to give him a higher position as schmeyer is now across and the 19.5 is his quickest he gets, has one more to see if he can go higher than 24th Absolutely. So a little bit more time. We see Trevor Vavrosky racing around here. He's not super comfortable in these trucks. We're getting reports. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not he can do better than his current uh, position at 28th on the qualifying charts. Looks like Josh Ebbotson's going to be comfortable with that fourth position right now. Nick Kuhn back in 25th position. Jason Wallet in 27th. So a couple of our drivers who are usually mid to front of the pack runners in most of our road racing series struggling today on the dirt at this high speed track. Retzlaff though, eighth position on his first uh, completed lap. So much better than uh, not qualifying. Looks like Kevin Hill's not gonna go any higher that time through. He has enough time for one last shot at it. Ray Partridge goes faster, but it's only 31st for him. As we look at Ryan Steele, uh, this time and next time by are going to be his only two as he started late and it's a 119.3. That will put him into 25th. Just for Plumlee in sixth position now, coming across that wonderful jump and coming around the, yeah, swinging around for turn eight back towards the front of the line. Ryan Meyer right now in ninth position. Looks like he's just kind of cruising around, setting his own time. So here's Retzloff one more time, trying to come around 54 seconds on the clock. So he's got a couple more turns to go. He's gonna swing it around turn seven here and then come back around turn eight. So a nice wide arc there, trying to take advantage of the banking. Gonna come across a couple of the bumps here through one more jump. Nice cut of that inside corner. He's got that truck nice settled down. Now through turn eight, he's gonna try and clip the apex late on the corner and cross the line. Can he improve his time? He cannot. Eighth position is gonna do the best he can do. Ooh, and Vavrosky had a bad entry into that corner. So we look to Kevin Hill now in the 52 sitting in 14th. And his last time lap will sadly get deleted. Must have clipped some of the walls somewhere along the ways. Ryan Steele setting up for that final hairpin at turn eight. This is his second time lap. He's in 25th. He crosses under the bridge and it is a 19.5. He's about two tenths off. Yeah, lots of the drivers struggling right now as the qualifying, over the course of the qualifying, the track has uh, 
lost quite a bit of that wet grip that we get from the pre-treated track. Now, after every one of these sessions, it'll be set back to about 15% uh, in the iRacing scale of how they treat the track. That's to replicate how they uh, treat the track between rounds, but we're going to our grid for our first heat, Joe. Indeed. Remember, this is a land rush, so a slightly different style, but Peterson will get the pole as Connor Berry starts second, then it's Swain in P3, followed by Chin in fourth. Meyer will be P5 as Warling starts in sixth, Warren in seventh, and Stevenson in eighth, then it's Kurt Crum in ninth, and Driscoll rounds out your top ten. Chrissy Tito in 11th position with Eric Mickey in 12th. 13th is going to be Ryan Steele and Nick Kuhn in 14th, lining up next to Jason Wallet, 15th. Then we got Aaron Roofs in 16th and Wayne Hutchison, your last driver in this heat, rounding out your 17 drivers. Only 12 will transfer to the feature. So there is some pressure to do well here. And Little Birdie told me that the pole position does not get a good start at this track. So it might actually be a bit of a disadvantage. We'll see if that plays out once we get going. We've got a couple more that need to work their way to the grid. Again, welcome to the Crandon World Cup from the majors. The first time they've done these Pro 2 and Pro 4 trucks. And it looks like we just need Warren and Roos to make their way out to the grid. And then we start a chaotic nine laps here around this short mile and a half course. I think it looks like we've got a few more seconds worth as Roofs has made his way out there onto that second row, warring to fill the gap as he does on the front row. So the engines start to rev and we get ready for the first land rush in the history of the majors. Green flag is out. Somebody had a false start in the second row. Somebody doesn't even get going on the front row as out to the front. Barry has a huge jump and he is going to have a clear shot to the first right hander. It was Kurt Crum that didn't get started in the number seven truck. He's back there in the 13th position, but it's a big mess down there for the fourth position as they all go side by side. Oh no, the 93 truck. That is Joshua Chin who is over track. But now it's still Connor Berry out front with Cameron Pedersen on second place, Keaton Swain and Travis Worling in fourth. Wow, this is going to hurt for Chin unless he's got incredible pace for the rest of this thing to get into that top 12. Because if he doesn't, then he's not going to take part in the feature, which means a lot of points given away. Up at the front, Barry leads Peterson as they come around the hairpin to go past the finish line for the first time. A bit of a schlamozzle on the inside of that hairpin. You can see a few trucks getting caught up with each other. Oh, Andrew Waring hits the inside wall. He's going to lose a position to Steve Driscoll. Ryan Myers also going to try and go by, but the lead of the race is really tight, and it's got Cameron Pedersen, who's lost position to Connor Barry now. Connor Barry up there in in that second position, Nick Kuhn currently leading. Actually, Nick Kuhn has gone to the pits. Oh no. So another driver out of it as they all swing into the hairpin and look at them all go very, very deep. In fact, a few making contact in there, including Stevenson and Waring. And I see a few uh, coming together behind them as well, including Hutchison and Wallet as Chin's got himself up to 15. Three more positions to go as we ride on board with Peterson still chasing Barry. Peterson's got Keaton Swain for company right behind him as well. The car, the truck you saw backwards was actually Chris Yatito. He's able to keep it going actually after that turn four incident. But look at them going very deep now through turn seven as they try and get a more straight exit off of this jump that comes between seven and eight. Then they're going to swing around turn eight, try and late apex it as they come across the line to start lap two. Whew. Okay, eight more of these as we look back from Barry at Peterson, currently holding the advantage. A little clip to the inside behind them as Keaton Swain cut it a little too close there, but I think he managed to get away with it down into turn three as they now come to the fastest part of the course, plunging towards the hairpin of four. Good news for, for Joshua Chin fans. He's able to get into 12th position. That's the final transfer spot into the feature. He's currently battling with Aaron Roofs. And here we go, taking a look at that. That's Aaron Roofs on the outside. Josh Chin on the inside. Josh able to make that pass. Kurt Crumb's going to try and fall him through the seven truck. Oh, and he gets hit oh. from behind by Jason Wallet. Able to keep going, though. Wallet gets hit as well with Hutchison behind him. 
So it's all coming out through that hairpin. Watch out when you head into there. The swift right-hander of five, and look at how quick they're going through nearly 100 in the dirt. And then they have to hit jumps after that as they swing back around. It is still Barry leading Peterson, but by a mere three-tenths of a second. We ride on board with Jen. He's got a little bit of a gap up to the next one. Absolutely, he's gonna have a little bit of a calm race now as far as he can keep himself from getting attacked from behind as he tries to fight his way up there towards Chris Tito and the Triple Eight machine up ahead of him. He's got Eric Mickey about a second ahead of him as well. They're coming around turn eight to start lap three. So for those who are fans of Steel and Coon, they took their spare trucks. They're back out in racing. They'll get one uh, per heat and uh, and feature here today. So we take a look here at Mickey leading Yatito for a second. But up at the very front, we can't leave these guys too long because the 148 has been looking underneath Barry almost each and every slow corner. He just can't seem to get the launch. No, Barry's been doing a good job of covering off Pedersen. Pedersen does not want to, uh, does not want to getting into any contact with Barry at this stage in the race. They're less than halfway through this thing at this point, but look at this. Peterson with a great run, actually, as they go through the long, sweeping turn six. As they approach turn seven, is he going to try and make a move here? Is he going to try and set him up coming off eight into one? Look at this. They both take different lines. Peterson trying to get a little bit of an earlier apex, but Barry able to keep the speed going as they go over the jump, headed towards eight. Just shadowing one another for now, the 148. We're going to try to get that nose tucked underneath, but can't get what he needs out of it. Warring on the inside is to the outside. Driscoll tries to cut under, but unfortunately bumps into his teammate instead. These two don't want to tangle too hard, considering the team's championship as they come down towards turn oh, three. Wayne Hutchinson's on his side. He's gonna have to take a tow. He flipped himself over in turn eight. Wayne Hutchinson's out of this. That's three trucks who have had trouble and had to take tows this race. He got a little bit of help uh, from Wallet bumping him that sent him into the inside wall. And that's what rolled him over in the end. Ooh, very wide for the 336 there. Now see Driscoll trying to come back at Andrew Waring. Waring taking it a little bit too deep into turn four. Now as they come up towards long sweeping turn five, these all-wheel drive trucks able to pull them through pretty cleanly and pretty efficiently. But Andrew Waring able to stretch the stretch his truck out just a little bit. This is the battle for sixth position. Just as for information, our current driver who's last in the uh, qualifying uh, able to make it out of this into the feature if they were to finish like this is Kurt Crum in 12th position behind Joshua Chin. Aaron Roofs currently the first driver eliminated in 13th. Right on board with Driscoll watching his teammate. You talked about the difference in lines. It seems like almost every corner he's trying to go where his teammate is not, but it hasn't produced results quite yet. Up and over the humps through one and two as this track swings back and forth blind over here up to three. And it looks like Yatito has managed to, what, did he get by Chin? No, Chin tried to close in on Yatito, but it was a little bit of contact between Yatito and Mickey, and that's what brought our attention to these guys. So watch out for something here as they go down from turn three, down through a couple of these little kinks into turn four. Yatito taking it very deep and into, well, I mean, it's not really a cushion, but a little bit of the untouched dirt on the edge. And that's one of the reasons why you may see some of those other lines, some of the truck drivers try to keep those, that, those rear tires onto that buffer of that fresh dirt on the outside because that gives them a little bit more purchase around the turns. But Yatito looking a little bit unstable as we ride on board with Joshua Chin chasing them down. He's gaining time. You can see the damage on his truck that he's dealing with, though. But with these things, you'll often see at least a little bit of damage throughout the course of a race. Both of them swinging side by side ahead of him, almost getting into the door of the 86. But Yatito keeps it clean, keeps doing that. He could become vulnerable to the 93. And here we go, a nice move up to the inside from the Triple Eight machine, but just can't get it done, unfortunately. Just unable to do so. Look at this, he's actually getting that truck sideways off of the jump to try and get a little bit more purchase, but doesn't seem to be working out for him, unfortunately. Oh, he you flip over and he's out. Oh, he left the track boundaries, and unfortunately that's an automatic tow. 
just clipped that inside berm a little too much. And unfortunately, he's going to be joining Hutchison and having to uh, come into the pits. Wayne just came out and has returned, but he spent a lot of time taking that toe as these are the top two. Barry and Peterson, it's now down to two tenths of a second. He is right underneath that tailgate. They swing into turn seven, looking for the purchase, going high up into the banking. The 20 or the 148, unfortunately not able to get the launch he wants. Now he's going to try to go the long way around, maybe? No, once again, the over under as just behind them. You can see the blue machine of Keaton Swain just watching on truck drivers these two in front are absolutely showing you the art of dirt track racing right now look at how smooth those trucks look as they go through these turns one fluid motion from one turn to the next and then a smooth corner out this just shows the excellence that these guys have as they're racing here Pedersen on board with him now as we take him into turn four look how deep they go into here because that that dirt on the outside that untouched dirt gives them a ton of purchase it's actually able to let them go through the corner faster than this clay that they're racing on. You can see just how far to the outside they go and just pick up as much turn as they possibly can on board with Pedersen as we're watching Barry up ahead. It looks like Synchronized Swimming out here. I can't imagine what the real drivers go through with some of these landings. It cannot be comfortable. He's still been hounding him the entire way, but Barry has not buckled under the pressure this time by, it's gonna be two to go. I wonder what the 148 can do at this stage. Haven't seen a lot of variety out of him. He just keeps trying to go that wider line in. Uh, trying to get out there in the dirt, try and get a little bit more more purchase here. These two drivers, though, definitely the class of the field. They pulled out almost two seconds over Keaton Swain, who's trying to catch up to them. In fairness to Keaton, he's pulled out eight seconds over Travis Horling, who's under threat from Ryan Meyer for position. Here's that battle on screen. Yeah, Meyer just behind Travis Worling as he holds on to that fourth position outside of the podium. And they're coming up on lap traffic. That is Yatito in front of them, who's returned. He might actually have better pace since I imagine he's probably in his spare truck now. So hopefully it won't become a problem in this equation. All of them sending it in deep and then coming out hard. A few little jumps on the run down to turn five before they chuck it in at 100 miles an hour on board with Meyer. Yeah, as we're riding on board with Meyer, look at these jumps that they're taking and look at how sideways these trucks get. I mean, they're literally taking them off of the jump sideways to try and make sure that the trucks stay turned in for that long sweeping turn six. Now as they head towards turn seven, yet another jump and then the, the big hairpin of seven. Look at this, a very different line from all these truck drivers as they try and sort this out in front of them. But I can also report that Aaron Roofs, who's currently in the final transfer position, has just actually had Jason Wallet flip over over him as they were battling for 12th position. So Wallet over on his lid. He's going to have to take a tow now. Oh, well, that means he's not in the feature. Also, as all this was happening, Peterson actually made contact with the back of Barry in the final corner. We're on the last lap. So he might be getting antsy or he's just playing getting closer. And this time he gets to the inside, almost gets the run off in comparison, but can't keep it side by side. This could be the last shot as they're running a very long straight coming down towards turn six. Will this be the one? Will we see a defense from the 28? He tries to cover off the inside as Peterson tries to get underneath him, but he goes too far to the inside and he clips the berm. He holds onto it without flipping over, but that might be race over. Barry just was able to keep it more clean. Pedersen tried to make that move up the inside, but just clipped the burn just a little bit with that inside left tire. This has given Barry the buffer that he needs as they go over the final jump towards turn eight as they turn the corner. Unless Barry makes a huge mistake here, it's going to be his win for the Heat. Barry wins Heat number one here in the Crandon World Cup. Pedersen is second. Swain back there in third, running his own race as will we have Worling finish in fourth because Meyer tries to come close, but it looks like he's not going to be able to make it. Waring manages a sixth. 
with Driscoll climbing three positions into P7. Stevenson just behind them as well. And I think Eric Mickey's actually going to be out of this because he must have wrecked on the final lap. I believe Ryan Steele's going to get the final transfer position. I think you're right. In fact, he's the only other truck that's going to finish on the lead lap and appropriately the number 12. They can see the dog bear red car just coming around. Yeah, so he'll go past Mickey as he sits in pit lane, waiting for the car to tow. And this will mean that uh, the drivers that will not advance are Mickey, Kuhn, Hutchison, Yatito, and Wallet. Unfortunately, there you see the finishing results while we wait for Steele to come to the line. Whew, kind of expected it to be a bit frantic, but that was a shot of adrenaline for sure. And the remainder of your fields uh, there. While we've got the opportunity, we do want to talk about our charity for these races, and that is the Alzheimer's Association. The Alzheimer's Association leads the way to end Alzheimer's and all other dementia by accelerating global research, driving risk reduction and early detection and maximizing quality care and support as well. To find out more, check out our link in the description below. In the meantime, we have our second heat now lined up. Let's go through that starting order. Luke Nup will be on this poll with Josh Edmondson in second. It is Christopher Plumley in P3. Those are other uh, ringers for this round. Rhett's in fourth, followed by Morton in P5. Christian Challoner, the multi-time champion, starts from sixth as Kevin Hill is seventh and Brophy is P8. Then it'll be Brian Barnes ninth as Thunhorst rounds out your top ten. We've got Isaac Snyder, Brian McGreevy, Jeff Schmeyer, Lynn Kinchlow, Trevor Vavrosky, and Ryan Partridge, as well as uh, Steve Driscoll, who's going to finish off this one. But we're already racing for these drivers in Heat 2. Looks like Rob Power's got a poor start way up towards the front, though. Nup manages to sneak to the inside on the inside wall. I think that was Edmondson. Keeps it from going around as they go three wide into turn six, starting to fan out. So far, so good. A little bit of beat and a bang. Now we got Ooh. one turned around. It looks like Lynn Kinchlow, unfortunately. Yeah, Lynn Kinchlow turned around, but everyone else able to keep going forward. So actually a pretty decent start for a land rush as far as it's concerned. But now we're into turn seven and there's been a gigantic accident. That's Rob Powers, who's over up on his lid, as well as the 89 truck of uh, Matthew Thunhorse and the 98 as well. So quite a few trucks out of this one. But now starting lap one, Luke Nupp over Christopher Plumley and Josh Edmondson. Last time it was a nail biter for the top two all the way down to the finish so far here as we come around for the first full lap. It is only about half a second between first, second and second and third flying down towards the hairpin. Last time we saw a lot of drivers run into one another. What are we going to see this time? Looks like it's pretty clean as we go around turn four. Wow, actually very clean for these drivers in this particular heat. Luke Nupp still ahead of Plumley and Edmondson. Uh, looks like everyone's going to be able to make it through turn four, four cleanly. Edmondson in front of Retzloff for third and fourth, and Christian Challoner out of your top five. Now, we saw the track at least change a little bit, but how much really do you think we'll see here in these heats considering uh, we don't have very many trucks, and it is only nine laps. Absolutely, only 17 trucks on track for this particular heat. Once again, 12-wheel uh, transfer, so we're not going to lose that many trucks here, but look at this, not putting on a show up front, actually pulling away from Plumley a little bit, who's got a threat from Edmondson, who's looking up to that inside. Everybody's swinging around that final corner as we hop on board with Edmondson. That uh, looks like a Jim Beaver Esports driver, if I've ever seen one, based on the sponsor. And he's still hounding Plumley, who's starting to lose touch with Nup. It is now eight tenths of a second, nine tenths of a second behind the 177. Absolutely, there they go deep into turn four once again. Edmondson with some great rotation there. He's able to get off the corner pretty decently, but Plumley able to get a little bit more purchase from the rear tires there. Remember, these are the Pro 4 trucks. These are the trucks all-wheel drive with a little bit more horsepower behind them compared to the Pro 2s, which we're going to see shortly after this heat and the feature race. 
The bubble position is contested right now as Snyder and Barnes are side by side through the fast kink of turn five. This is for 11th. They're trying to keep themselves safe from any sort of issues as uh, Snyder very fast down to turn six and Schmeier nearly found a car underneath him. And all these truck drivers have got to work together at this point because Ray Partridge, who's in 13th, is two and a half seconds behind us. Oh, Snyder no! goes deep into the corner. You can see his hands working there as he tries to keep that thing pointed forward into turn seven, able to hang on to it, but loses the position to Brian Barnes. Down to 12, thinks about trying to send it in. Barnes as well, nearly getting into the number 30. Everybody stays out of each other as they start yet another lap. With all this fierce fighting, I think you're right. They could cause themselves their own trouble and uh, suddenly fall out of the advancing positions. The four are gonna try to go the wide way around a three. Oh, and contact underneath them. More oh. contact there between Barnes and, Barnes and Steiner there for that 12th position once again. Brian Barnes able to keep going straight, but now everyone's starting to string out a little bit into single file as we get further on into this race on lap three. Out of the hairpin before, much better run this time from Schmeier, keeping himself clear out of Brian Barnes, but Barnes, Great traction as he starts to pick up the pace, but the truck doesn't look as good as he runs narrow through five and he loses ground. Absolutely, it's just different advantages to different drivers who are more comfortable at different parts of this track. Really, it's only the top uh, four who are super comfortable here, but look at this very close between those two drivers as they go through turn seven for yet another time. This particular race feels a little quicker than the other one, Joe, because we haven't seen quite as many battles for position, but one battle is starting to shape up is for, between Justin Morton and Christian Challoner for fifth. The diversity of Morton's skill continues to amaze me, but uh, not too shocked to see him quick here on the dirt as we watch him on the Bootleg Racing League's Dirt Street Stock Series. A little fewer right-hand turns on that one. But the nine is stalking the only driver to have ever won the majors championship twice. And as they come into the hairpin, I don't think he's going to get a good enough exit this time. Got a little bit crossed up as they went into four, actually got a little bit of a uh, right lock going into that corner, was able to correct it and get back pointed towards the left turn. But he's stalking Christian Challoner, who's taking a little deep through five. Justin Morton, a little shallow himself, trying to set up a different line as they go through the long sweeping turn six. But as they head towards seven, Morton and Challoner pretty even. Let's see whether or not Morton tries to make a move up the inside. We know he's got a lot of dirt experience, just not quite as much experience in these trucks and Christian Challoner, pretty fresh to this discipline. Uh, he tends to be more of a pavement guy, but he's fast pretty much no matter what you put him in. As ooh, maybe an over under there from Morton. Gets pinched down. Challoner just not going to give him the space that he needs to get that purchase. They've already started lap five now, coming up towards turn three. Absolutely, Christian Challoner doing a good job to hold off Morton. Not entirely efficient. Oh, oh, that was Hill. Hill in the background going for a wild ride, and he's unfortunately going to take a toe. No, he gets it turned over. Look at that. So he's back in the fight now in 13th position. So this is actually going to close up that battle for 12th between those drivers. Here's Kevin Hill. He just clips the inside berm a little bit, flips that truck over multiple times, is able to keep it going somehow. He just wiggles that car back and forth, pins it on the gas on that right rear axle, and gets it going again. And we lost Matthew Thunhorst. Oh, he did wind up on his lid in the hairpin. And I think this was without touching anybody else. I think he must have also clipped the inside. So he'll take a toe and unlikely to see the feature race in the Pro 4s. We watch Hill, who is just outside of the transfer spots, but make that just inside now. Well, maybe oh. not. As McGreevy goes oh. underneath, and he sends him over for the second time this race. For the second time, he led on four wheels. Somehow, Kevin Hill is still racing in this thing. He's got four laps to get this thing done. But I mean, the fact that he's still driving is impressive. But here we go once again with Challoner and Morton. And Morton managed to get around him. But Challoner's fighting back as they come down to the hairpin. He's going to have the inside. The question is, will this be the faster line? 
Can he pull a slide jump? No, he has to check up. Doesn't want to get into the side of Justin Morton, and Morton completes the pass. Really beautiful racing for both of those guys to avoid contact into turn four. Christian could have tried to force the issue a little bit more, but decided better of it. Remember, both of these are in transfer positions. There's no need to go beating and banging quite yet. That's all. Oh! Christian Schoner ends up landing on that right front suspension just a little bit too hard and ends up spinning him towards the right. He's going to lose a lot of time to Morton now. Caught it, though, before it went out into the alfalfa and he is still running in six. So importantly, he'll be able to make it to the feature if he can keep it here. But clearly, you mentioned before, not his bailiwick, and he's not as flawless as we're used to seeing. Literally so, Luke Nup out in front by almost two seconds over Christopher Plumley, who's got Joshua Edmondson under pressure uh, here for that uh, second position. And they've got three and a half seconds back to Cody Retzlaff behind, and it's four and a half seconds back to Justin Morton. So this battle for second position is where the heat is on at the moment. We look at this battle for P2. Last time it was for the top spot. This time it's best of the rest. Edmondson just making sure to keep that 137 on us. We ride on board with him. Heading down towards turn six. You can see the speeds that they're running is still getting off into the air at 90 plus. Absolutely, they're, they're flying across this track. It's really impressive to watch. And you were talking about the track evolution, whether that would be a factor, it really has been. You can see just how much play is out there. As we see, uh, we see Edmondson trying to take a shallower line, but just because of how packed in that dirt is on the inside, he can't get the power down. So unfortunately, can't actually gain that much. But actually, there's a nice battle for 10th position between Jeff Schmeier and Isaac Snyder. They're going side by side as they head towards turn seven. Snyder's got the inside. He's going to try to slide job to see if he can pull it off. But no, underneath him and back through with a little bit of elbows out. Schmeier retains P10. That was a great move from Schmeier to sell Snyder the dummy. You can see him out there in the packed dirt. That's a lot of the loose dirt rather. That's allowing him more purchase as Snyder takes the inside, which you'd assume would be the faster line. But because he can't get the power down as efficiently, Schmeier is able to maintain that position. And they've got to look behind them because Brian McGreevy starting to stalk them as well. Snyder looking up the inside again here of Schmeier. Who's going to get the better exit this time? It's once again going to be Schmeier as they go outside into that soft dirt once again. Keep doing this. That's McGreevy back there in the 68. I wonder if he'll fancy a chance to try and overtake the pair of them. In fact, he's trying to run a much lower line down through the hairpin. You can see him just out from the tailgate of Schmeier, but doesn't get as much of a launch as he maybe was anticipating. We are down to two laps to go. Oh, and Schmeier clips the inside. He loses one spot. Is he going to lose two? Trying to hang on to it here. He's able to do so. He's not going to lose that position to Brian McGreevy, but McGreevy putting some serious pressure on him. Remember, McGreevy's in 12th position, so he's got a transfer spot. These guys don't want to tangle too badly. They've got three seconds back to Lynn Kinchlow in 13. White flag is out. It's the final lap, and it is still up leading by a handy two and a half seconds. Plumley and Edmondson are still trying to sort out how the rest of the podium is going to go. We see Nup on screen already coming into the final hairpin, or where, excuse me, the four lap, uh, turn four hairpin rather. And there is the gap to the trucks behind him as they pick up speed down towards turn five. Taking a look at Plumley now. Yeah, Christopher Plumley there in that second position in that purple truck. We've got Josh Edmondson in the in the fistful of bourbon machine tucked in behind him in that number 158. Ooh, a little bit wide there for Edmondson as he's following Plumney all around, but last two corners here for Knup. Luke in that 177 has been unfazed the entire heat. He's put it on pole, and as he comes into turn eight, chucks it around the hairpin. The 177 will win heat number two in the Pro Fours. Plumley takes second. Third goes to Edmondson and Retzlaff with a quiet fourth behind them.
Absolutely beautiful final turn from Nup, but it's still side by side between Brophy and Barnes for the eighth position back there as we watch them come around turn eight. Is Brian Barnes going to send it up the inside? Let's see whether or not he can get a better exit. It's going to be close, but it's going to be Brophy that takes eighth spot. Couldn't quite get it. Also a battle and the final transfer position. Smire ahead of McGreevy by tenths of a second at the line. And it looks like Kinchlow is going to be our first that won't make it, unfortunately, along with Hill, Partridge, and Powers. Uh, so there is the uh, starting grid. We're looking for the results. There's the race results for uh, heat number two, which will take us to the feature in just a moment. And they are already starting to grid up. Up at the top, of this field. It is going to be Connor Berry as Luke Nupp will be second and Cameron Pedersen will be third. Then is Christopher Plumley in P4, followed by Swain in fifth. Edmondson starts P6 and Warling in seventh. Retzlaff P8, Meyer ninth, and Morton rounds out your top 10. Warren going to start off in 11th with Christian Challoner, 12th. Steve Driscoll's going to start off 13th with Favrosky, 14th, 15th. Mark Stevenson, then we got Jason Brophy in 16th spot with Joshua Twin in 17th. Brian Barnes, 18th. Kurt Crum, 19th. Then Snyder in 20th. Roofs, Schmeier, Steele, McGreevy, and Mickey are going to round out your 25-truck field. They've made it to the big show. Now the question is, how are they going to finish? Three full rows. Well, two full rows and one last one behind them. As the engines start to rev, the lights are up. The green flag is out. They all take off barreling down towards the first corner. And it's looking like a very good start for Barry to the inside. He's going to be clear behind him. Three, four wide coming down into that swift right hander. They managed to get through it. And now it's down into turn six and there's banging between the two leaders. One uh, truck going sideways. Absolute chaos in the back, but everyone's able to keep going forward. Is this a side by side battle between Luke Nup and, Ke and Keaton Swain? Pedersen actually trying to make a move around the outside now as they dive into seven. Everyone able to keep their trucks going forward for the most part. Looks like it's going to be a pretty clean start here, Joe. A clean relatively. Swain nearly got into second, almost first, but fell back to fourth and down into turn eight. I think this is where it's all going to go south. And look at them in the background. In fact, one truck nearly going up and over. That was going to be Brian McGreevy. He keeps it on its wheels. Uh, it is madness out there. Well, it's going to be nice. They're done being nice now. This is the feature race. This is where the points are doled out. So everyone's going to be on each other right now. It's side by side between Ebbotson and Chin for the sixth position. Here they go into turn four. This is where some serious chaos can happen. Ooh, looks like Nup's going to get a bit of a hit from Ooh. Pedersen. Oh, someone on their lid. 93 truck of Joshua Chin, who is on his lid. He's they're very familiar with this particular event. Here we go, taking a quick replay of this one. This is going to be some nice side-by-side -side contact between these guys. Yeah, he winds up on his tires. Yeah, someone just came barreling in there. And he says, well, I got a few uh, pieces of sheet metal that aren't bent yet, so might as well keep going. And he runs 13th. Not exactly maximum points for him, but Connor Barry out in front of this entire field with Luke Nup looking at his rear uh, rear bumper. Cameron Pedersen also there, as well as Keaton Swain, who's about a second behind. So it's really a, a top three that are tight, right close together. Say now start lap two. Barry just ahead by about half a second over the 177, who took a lot of the inside berm that time. Flicking the car off to the left through three. Can't get the traction. Loses a little bit, but it's still down to two tenths of a second between them. And as these guys are battling, I'm keeping my eyes on the battle for seventh position between Travis Worling and Cody Retzloff. Not in a great position right now. A little bit too, uh, far back from his starting spot. And they've got Christian Challoner tucked in there as well, trying to battle for tenth position. Four wide as they come off a of turn four. Holy cow. 
And to the inside of it is going to be Whirling, but that shallow entry might cost him. Can Retzlaff cut underneath? Or is he going to get boxed? No, he's going to go the long way around, give himself the inside down into turn six. A beautiful pass as up underneath him. Here comes Meyer as well. Meyer making an excellent move there as we see Andrew Whirling in the background clipping that outside wall, but Meyer making a great move. Here comes Travis Whirling to try and take the inside once again, but Meyer going out in toward that soft dirt trying to make it work. It's going to be three wide as they come off a of seven. Everyone able to make it through cleanly. Red's laugh comes out the best. Still NP7. Meyer, oh, as they almost go three wide once again. Through turn eight. Meyer to the outside of Warling. Warling doesn't have the traction coming off the final hairpin and joining the fray. We've got Challoner and Warring as well. Warring looking underneath Challoner, trying to take the spot away into turn two, but it doesn't stick. Yeah. Once again, Challoner just sticking it up the inside, trying to hold fast to that position. It looks like Isaac Snyder has gone around himself. He's able to get that truck going once again. So unfortunate for him, he's fallen back towards the back of the pack. Here they come, though. This big battle pack coming into turn four one more time. Once again, three wide off of four. It seems like those inside lines just not what the drivers need. Momentum is the word of the day. And they go line astern this time down into turn five. Who is going to be quick out of it? Oh, well, it's going to be really close. More contact between the drivers as they came over the jump there. In the background, we also see Joshua Chin on his recovery drive currently in 13th, making contact with Justin Morton, who started off a little bit out of position because of the contact that everyone made through turn five off of the land rush. And uh, in front of them, Looks like Meyer fancies a chance at Rhett's laugh as we go side by side once again between Warren and Challoner. Challoner sends it in too deep. Warren, can he get the run off the turn? He's a little shallow, but he does it. Yeah, Challoner ending up just getting a little bit shuffled backward, to be honest with you. He's not feeling super comfortable in that truck as these drivers are getting extremely aggressive out in front of him. Look at this, a deep dive from Joshua Chin up the inside, almost made contact with them out of the camera shot there. But Challoner clipping the outside berm, coming off a of turn three. He's showing some signs of wear and tear, Joe. Oh, and uh, we've got oh. a battle in front of them. Oh, and Meyer with a beautiful slide job gets in front of Retzlaff through turn four. That was a seriously impressive move. We're going to take one more look at this because this is this is a moment of beauty here. Look at this. Ryan Meyer just slows it down instead of setting it deep into the corner, ends up sticking his rip bumper right in front of Whirling, able to sneak away. Pardon me, excuse me. I believe that is my spot. And that will put him into seventh. This is not over. Look at them still having Warling just behind them, along with the likes of Warring as well. They all fly down towards the hairpin of eight, just leaning those trucks into the corner. Josh Chin starting to make some aggressive moves back there in the 11th position. He just made a pass on Justin Morton pretty forcefully through turn eight for these uh, final positions, uh, looking for a top 10. Oh no, the 915 off track. Can he get back on? Ryan Meyer able to get back onto track, but that's going to cost him a lot of time in positions. Brett's laugh gets by. It looks like potentially Warling could too, but he's on the Long outside of the corner. Off. Pedersen. He's, he's gone. Did he clip something? We'll have to check on that in a little bit. No, this so, was a connection issue. Oh, no. So looks like Warling uh, is going to be able to get by Meyer in the end as we look up at Nup and Barry still split by three tenths of a second. These two drivers are duking it out for the win here. They've got two seconds over Keaton Swain, who's down in the third position now because Pedersen ended up losing that connection. So unfortunately for him, out of this race, but these two drivers very tight together. But here we go once again, Warling up ahead of Meyer, who's got Andrew Warring tucked in behind him as well. As this battle continues between many of our uh, season hopefuls, and we've got uh, Ryan Meyer in there, one of our ringers. And Meyer seems to be the only one that's figured out how to get that inside line to do something and use it for a couple passes. Doesn't stick this time. As Travis Warling says, not yet, sir. We hop on board with Ryan. 
Not only has he got to attack, but he's got to defend because Warring is behind him. Oh, look at that. A little bit sideways move there. Here we go. As he sneaks up the inside once again, is he going to be able to get the power down and stay ahead? It's really close, but can't quite get the power down on the 90 truck, unfortunately. As we're watching this, it looks to me like Luke Nup is trying to set up Connor Barry for a pass. He's made some aggressive moves to the inside for that lead position over the last couple of laps, and it's starting to get pretty intense up there for the lead. As we take a look at those leaders, yeah, Nup has been poking his nose. He's gotten it at times down to a tenth of a second between them. Around the final corner, everybody hugging as far inside as they can go. Then through one and two, swift chicane, left and then right, up over a blind crest, and into three, where the exit is oh so critical. Yeah, look at this. Both of these drivers very calm and collected. Barry with a little bit of a clip on the inside berm there, just able to sneak it out and able to keep going. But look at this, Nup and Barry, very deep into the corner. Barry, uh, Nup actually trying to goose it a little bit through the middle of the corner, see if he can get that truck to rotate a little bit more. But unfortunately, nothing doing. Barry able to continue to snake out ahead of them. These guys are so even in these trucks. It's just inches between them. The artistry that they're showing in these trucks is very impressive. Ooh, this time he nearly gets into the side of him, but he timed it perfect and just missed the rear bumper of Connor Barry. I'm kind of worried that he might miscalculate at some point and actually tip him around. Oh, it's very close. You can see him actually moving the truck of Connor Barry just a little bit on the exit there, but we actually need to go back towards that battle with Ryan Meyer and Andrew Waring because Waring's up the inside of Meyer now as they go into turn seven. They see him as they go side by side, coming down to turn eight. Warring. Got it done. Beautiful stuff. Or using that Meyer strategy of diving it down to the inside, ends up sticking his rear bumper where Meyer wants to go. But Meyer, look at him with confidence in that in that soft dirt or on the outside, able we to gotta, keep it going. Sorry, we got to go to the leaders. We got to go to the leaders because this is the best run that Nup has had. In fact, he's almost pushing the 28 along the straightaway. Both of them down into the corner. Both of them trying to find purchase off of the dirt and just barely, it is Barry ahead. Let's see whether, so Nup has taken this second jump after turn five a lot faster than Barry multiple laps in a row. Is he going to do it once again and try and force Barry into a mistake? Here we go off that jump. Look at this, Nup staying right behind. We're coming up on the white flag lap. Just two more corners to go before they take the white flag. These two guys duking it out for the win. That was the closest he's gotten all race long. What did he learn from last time? Can he do it again? Nothing doing, down into seven as they both cross the track, setting up for turn eight. White flag at the ready for Barney, and I see Driscoll has come to a halt on the track. I'm not sure what happened there. We'll try to get it later. This is it for all the marbles in the first half of tonight as Nup just stalks behind the 28. He got a great exit last time. Can he do it a second time once again, getting right underneath him? He's gonna have to move him, Joe. He's gonna have to move him into four if he wants an opportunity. I'm not sure whether or not that's Nup's racing style, but that's the only opportunity he's gonna get. He breaks a little bit early, actually. He's gonna set up the inside, see if he can do a slide jump on Barry, but Barry able to see wise of it and go to the right side. He's able to get away well. That may have been the last real good chance unless he can get closer than this. Nup lost time trying to take that shallow line through. This all happened happening about three seconds ahead of Swain. Once again, he tries to chuck it into turn six and once again, the door has been shut. Nup trying to make one more desperate attempt. Is he gonna send it up the inside of seven here to try and take another desperate attempt? Look at this, he's all the way out there in the softer trying to get a better exit so he could get a good shot at eight. He's got a good exit this time around. He's even with Barry. Is he gonna try and set it up the inside? He is, he's gonna make contact. Send Barry out towards the outside. Not gonna try and take it off the corner. Who's gonna get to the line? It's Barry. Whoop. By one tenth of a second, three tenths of a second at the line. And Swain follows them across in third. Edmondson P4, Christopher Plumley with a nice top five. 
behind them. Oh my goodness, this is an absolute string of trucks from Meyer on back all the way down to Morton in 11th. Looks like we are going to see uh, 22 cars actually finish out of our 24. Not too shabby considering how crazy that was at the start. So let's go through our finishing order here today. Barry is your winner by the narrowest of margins as Luke Knupp finishes P2. It is Keaton Swain in third, followed by Josh Edmondson in fourth position. Christopher Plumley P5, followed by Retzlaff climbing up to six as Meyer was behind him in seventh. And it is Andrew Waring in P8, Warling in ninth, and Challoner settles for a tenth. Justin Morton going to finish in 11th position today with Brian Barnes in 12th. Jason Brophy, 13th spot with Mark Stevenson in 14th. Not a great result for him, but a decent recovery considering the fact that he was pointed backwards at the beginning of this race. Kurt Crum finishing in 15th position with Trevor Favrosky, 16th. Brian McGreevy, 17th. Jeff Schmeier, 18th spot with Ryan Steele, 19th. Joshua Chin could only recover to 20th with Isaac Snyder, 21st. Aaron Roofs, 22nd. Steve Driscoll, 23rd. Cameron Pedersen had his connection issue, which placed him 24th. And Eric Mickey did not start. Going to take us to a quick break here. For the majors, the Cranon World Cup will continue with the Pro 2s up next, so stick around.
Welcome back to Crandon International Raceway for the Majors Crandon World Cup. We are now here for the Pro 2s after we just watched the Pro 4s and Barry wound up taking the victory there. Connor winning both his heat and the feature. The uh, qualifying getting underway, so while we wait for some laps to be put down there, let's take a look at our other uh our other points for this series, the sportsman up next for our championships and uh, up at the top of those, we have Ozzie Mill Wayne ahead of Justin Garrick by a mere two points and then only three back to Joey Haynes with six back to Sherburn. It's just as tight, if not tighter than what we saw in the pros. Mink rounds out those top five. We also have the uh, Sport Teams Championship, Adam. Yeah, absolutely. The Sport Teams Championship. Also very tight up there with Forge Racing Sport 1, only 11 points ahead of Sector 5 Sports. So these guys very tight. And then just another four points between uh, Sector 5 and High Class Racing. Actually, I believe those two might be swapped, but they're actually a decent bit above Evolve Sim Sports. And considering the sportsmen score less points than the pros, that's actually going to be quite a big difference between these guys. So it's really the top three between Forge Racing Sport 1, High Class, and Sector 5 as far as um, who's going to be taking the championship in the sportsman class, which is um, actually being put on by another broadcaster at this moment. But fantastic racing between all those guys. And we, of course, have the Legends uh, Championship for the Legends drivers. These are the uh, silver drivers, if you will, as Kevin Hill is leading those with Brian Barnes, who we see here in the uh, pro split, not doing too shabby either. Wayne Hutchison, McGreevy, and Bennett rounding things out. Per perhaps the most spread apart of our driver championships uh, at this stage in the seasons. And then we've got the uh, the Legends Sports as well here, Adam. Absolutely. Maurice Gomignon out front in the lead over Robert Deloche, four points back. Robert Gamble, only one point back of Deloche, actually. And then look at this, a three-way tie for that fourth position between Robert Covey, Stephen Paulson, and Roger Shank, all only nine points back of the lead. Then Ernie Ludwig tucked in there in that fifth position, also 10 points back. So it's really, really close there. Don't forget our charity for this round is the Alzheimer's Association. If you want to find out more, check them out in the link below in the YouTube description. Big thank you uh, to the majors for once again, uh, collecting for an awesome charity. And I think we're just getting the first flying laps underway here. And it's all the same drivers that we had before and the same format, but very different trucks in terms of how they handle Adam. Yeah, absolutely. These trucks are rear wheel drive only. So it's a lot of throttle play. You're going to see a lot more opposite lock from these drivers as they get eager on the throttle coming off of those corners, trying to put power down. It's going to be really important to keep the nose pointed in the direction of travel in these particular trucks and um, to help them be a little bit more stable. The suspension gets them tucked in a little bit lower to the ground. You see how the how the side skirts are falling down in front of those rear wheels. Those are that rear axle built to be extremely stable to make sure they're getting as much power as possible. But right now, Travis Whirling with the fastest time in front of Ryan Meyer and Matthew Thunhorst. Let's get himself up to fourth as we look at Mickey now coming out of turn eight. Let's see what the 86 has underneath him a 22 seven. That'll be good enough for eighth. Swain goes fastest though with a 19 five. And one thing I neglected to mention is that when these trucks make contact, they're not as easy to save as the Pro 4 machines. So you're going to see a little bit more, probably a lot more uh, drivers going uh, spinning around over the course of this race and um, the hope is that these things don't flip as easily because of how low planted they are to the ground versus the Pro 4 trucks but it is, I mean it's still really challenging when you get all those trucks tucked together we got 24 in the feature and when you've got all four wheels driving it you have to think it's just put to the floor and get it to start going that direction not so and these whirling in fifth crosses the line and I able to go quicker 
Uh, in fact, about two tenths off as it looks like Nup trying to set off this final corner to get a good run. Yeah, Nup, remember he was he did an excellent job getting that uh, lead position for his particular heat, uh, second pole. And then we have uh, Cameron Pedersen who's actually got pole position at the moment, uh, not pole position, but the lead starting position for heat one, it would be in that current uh, first spot with Connor Berry, uh, pole position for heat two. Josh Edmondson currently in third and Keaton Swain in fourth. So once again, our ringers climbing their way to the top. Kind of expected that to be honest. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of drivers maybe taking this first lap to really set up the final quarter and start a flyer. So it looks like not uh, a lot of them feel confident about how this first one is go as Plumley uh, doesn't set a time that uh, one through. So definitely didn't need that first lap as we watch Tito, who certainly had some adventures. Yeah, a lot of truckers are throwing away their third lap and saving their all their effort for their fourth one, getting that final corner set up. So here we see Atito currently in that 11th position, just in front of Kurt Crum, going through turn three. Turn three, I find to be very difficult around here because you want to get as good of an exit as possible out of turn uh, turn three onto turn four. But here's Nup trying to set a good time, a 119.310. That should be good enough for the top five. And it is, he's up to top to P4. Yeah, and I love Nup's paint scheme, by the way. It brings back memories of being in the arcade playing off-road for me. Uh, Brian Barnes across as we now switch to Edmondson in third. Definitely one of our major players before. And he goes faster to an 18-7. That'll be pole for the 158. It was a very, very good lap as we take a look at Nup's paint scheme once again that Toyota Hilux machine clips the inside barrier if it was just the tire he should be fine but if he hit it with the front nose that will count as an incident but here's Plumley who crosses the line with a 119.8 good enough for sixth position so quite a few fast laps coming in at this point here's Yutito trying to set a better time as he comes around turning yeah unfortunately Nup uh, apparently didn't like the lap because he just then steered it off the road and gave up on it uh, Yutito here has two more left if he wants them. We're still waiting on three drivers to take times. Retzlaff, Powers, and Brophy. Yeah, Retzlaff's the surprise here because um, he was putting on some pretty decent times in the two-hour practice that we had beforehand. But he doesn't seem super comfortable in this Pro 2 machine, so struggling a little bit right now to get the power down for himself. Here's a Tito into that challenging turn four. It's just a wonderful forested area there that really gives you a sense that you're going quick when you come into it but these pro 2 trucks are a real handful Brophy didn't like that lap he parked it he's not got much time left in fact i'm not sure if he'll be able to get back around in time as we now have mickey on screen and unfortunately that's not going to be a best lap for his fourth dougie so. beard saying hi right there <laughs> isaac schneider uh his last lap not any quicker sadly what about driscoll Yes, a 22 flat, but so oh, it does give him some spots, 18th for him. Yeah, these Pro 2 trucks are a real handful in the dirt. They like to snap around on you, especially at the low speeds. And with the amount of hairpins that we have on this turn on this course, that that feathering of that throttle is going to be absolutely the key to getting this going. Yatito, we see crossing the line there. He's struggling to set some times. So you can see him bouncing off the inside wall. So it's a struggle for everyone, including our ringers right now. Yeah, so I suspect that means his last lap not going to be a quick one. And we're now watching Plumley once again. Last time had some troubles. The fourth lap, what's it going to be for the 137? Really tight to the inside around the turn. And it is a 19.5. That's his fastest, but it looks like he will not gain a position. Justin Morton finishing his lap, only currently P11 at the moment. Here's Trevor Vavrovsky. He's been struggling in his qualifying sessions as well, currently 27th position, uh, trying to beat a 123.2, coming around turn eight very wide, trying to get the power down. You can see just how the nose wants to head towards the inner side of the corner. Can't get it done, three tenths slower. Challoner up next, he's in 12th this time. 
Maybe having even more problems here now that we've switched to the Pro 2s. Last lap is his best at a 21 flat. And once again, he's in 10th. <laughs> That's exactly where he's been for uh, a heat and a, a feature, so... Very interesting here, but with 20 seconds to go, it looks like that's pretty much everyone who's going to be able to set a time here. Joshua Chin, we're seeing right now, going through turn six, but he's not going to have enough time to finish this lap. Yeah, so it is now set. The other thing this is really bringing back memories of, as a, a big fan of all the Papyrus games, is uh, Soda Off-Road Racing. I played a lot of that growing up i can tell you so we've got our heats ready to be gridded let's go to the first one of the evening josh edmondson starts on the pole of this one connor barry maybe not as quick in the pro two swain starts third with warling in fourth and it's thunhorst in p5 followed by hill in six yatito good enough for seventh mickey in eighth barnes in ninth and kinchlow rounding out your top 10. andrew warren's going to start off 11th with joshua chin in 12th ryan Steele 13th with trevor vavrosky in 14th ray partridge going to start off 15th spot with J with aaron roofs in 16th jason brophy your final starter for this 17 truck heat 12 transfer there you see forge racing just uh to the inside there as we wait for them to get the green flag which should be momentary yes here we go engines start to rev lights are up and the green flag is out this time everybody able to start thankfully and barnes on the outside and the four immediately goes off to the left he wants some clear air and wants to get away from everybody but the 158 is down in front and oh, oh, we got a little bit of beating and banging for a second. And the one that comes out the worst of it is Kinchlow. And Kinchlow went all the way to the outside and back onto the regular track to try and take the normal line into five. That's what put him on the outside there. But you can see these guys beating and banging. It's three wide back there for the 10th position between Keaton Sway and Travis Warling and Andrew Waring as they're going into the corner. Jason Brophy takes it a little bit deep through the exit of six and ends up dropping a couple of positions back to 11th spot. But right now, Edmondson out front with Hill, Yatito, and Barnes. So far, so good. Edmondson pulling himself a little bit of a handy gap. We come onto the start finish line to start lap one officially. Oh, we got a little bit of rubbing with Connor Barry, our winner in the Pro Fours, managing to overtake two trucks and get into fifth. Connor Barry doing a good job climbing his way forward, but the battle is up there for the second position right now between Kevin Hill, Yatito, and Barnes. Oh, man, Hill with a bad exit off of the corner. Yatito's going to look to the inside. You can see the ball squirming as they go through three behind him. Back we're three wide for a little bit for seventh. That's Warren Kinchlow and Warling now down into the hairpin. Who's got the launch? And my goodness, I'd say that it is the 21 of Swain on the attack on Barry as they all fan out coming towards five. We were watching Lynn Kinchlow decide to take a visit to the woods there as he went to the inside of the corner. But look at this, Keaton Swain sideways as he comes off the corner and that's Yatito and, uh, sorry, oh, that's no. Barnes and Andrew Warring and that's the four truck of Brian Barnes way off track. Oh, and four wide, they slam into him with Josh Chin in there, and they're still beating and banging, and they go into the outside wall as, unfortunately, Brian Barnes has been the punching bag of the field. Josh Chin also taking some disadvantage from that, but they're still four wide. It's 93, the 90 truck going up. That's Travis Warling once again having some trouble. First, he visits the jungle. Then he visits the berm. This man not having any luck, and then Brian Barnes gets completely cleared out by Aaron Roofs. I think, oh, and Barnes, unfortunately, a little unsighted, runs into the inside wall. I wouldn't be shocked if he had a little bit of grievances to go to the stewards with uh, after this race. Ooh, we got a battle second is on right now. And Barry. Yeah, yeah, Tito and Swain actually right now. Keaton Swain up there in the third position is just taking that away from Yatito on the exit of four. But look at Swain going very deep there. Yatito trying to get the power down, can't do so. Swain starting to fly his way forward up towards those top positions. Remember, he started in third, so he had lost some spots there early on and is clearly on a mission to try and regain them. He's back where he began this race as we ride on board watching the suspension work. This is absolute amazing marvel of engineering that they can get these trucks to bounce around like this. So much travel on these machines as we're riding on board with them. It's so interesting to watch this battle between these intense drivers for sure. 
Looks like top three have found themselves a little bit of space to spread out Edmondson, Hill, Swain. Your podium currently. Really where we start to get close is between Barry and Waring in, in sixth. Yeah, Waring trying to get the power down. Barry seems to have gotten his feet underneath him with this machine. Andrew Waring starting to fall back right now. Just can't get the power down in that machine as you see Barry diving it deep through the corner. Look at them as they go through four different lines. Once again, though, Kevin Hill on Keaton Swain. Yeah, those two are side by side through turn three. Now up into four, almost nudging Hill off into the barrier as he goes very wide out of the corner. Swain looks like he's got it. Hill just a little bit too wide and ends up taking Swain outside. But man, the battle for the final transfer positions are starting to heat up between Thunhorse, Brophy, and Warling actually, as they go three wide exiting four. Down into five, looking to cut underneath the pair of them. That is the 90 of Warling. He's got much better pace. Can he go the rest of the way around on the outside of six? No, he's gonna get nudged to the side by Thunhorst as well as Brophy, but he gets a good oh. launch once it, they hit midair. Been really dangerous between them, absolutely. But as they all sort this out a little bit, Brophy starting to figure out his way around these trucks as he powers it out. Bobrovsky falling in behind as well. Going up to Barry and Yatito, and Yatito got pinched on turn eight. Barry's going to slide into fourth. Barry doing a great job. He's definitely found his legs in this truck as wow contact actually between kevin hill and keaton swain once again that's going to give keaton swain an advantage as they head towards four they're all going to be pretty evenly spread out between second third fourth and fifth as they head towards turn four for the fourth time look at how close to the outside of the track uh swain is willing to go just dragging the tailgate along the hill to the outside there having a little bit of connection issues here and there which is certainly not fun for him Andrew Waring and Kinchlow and Warling actually having contact been through turn four once again. You know, the, the pro fours were pretty clean with a little bit of contact, but these guys are really beating and banging here in these heats in the pro twos. I wonder how much of this is down to the drivers simply not having nearly as much control and Thunhorse trying to climb all over the back of the 44. Kinch, though, keeping him behind for the time being as he tries to cut down low comparatively to everybody else. And that ended up throwing Thunhorse a little bit wide. He had to slide it through the corner, but Kinchlow can't get power off the corner. Contact in midair once again, almost sends Kinchlow around. Thunhorse trying to take it deep into the corner. Bobrovsky thinking about it as well. Can Thunhorse get the power down off the corner? He cannot. Kinchlow maintains that position. This is unfortunately checking them up because Vavrosky get, getting into the mix along with Brophy. So they now head towards turn four. We've seen a lot of battles start to erupt out of here as drivers get better launches over each other. And Thunhorst is looking good and quick. Looking on board with Vavrosky at Thunhorst and Kinchlow. Thunhorst is going to set it deep into four, but is it too deep? Here we go, Kinchlow trying to get the power down off at the corner. It's going to be pretty even. Kinchlow actually slides the rear tires just a little bit. Thunhorse with a better run is going to look up the inside. We're riding on board with him now. To turn five, he's got the inside and preventing the cutback. He parks it right in front of Kinchlow. Covers off the inside, down into turn six. Kinch can't do anything with it as now he's got to play defense. That's the 10 of Avrosky. Avrosky actually doing a great job in this in this heat, try, doing an excellent job climbing his way forward, knock on wood, of course, because commentator's curse, we saw it strike earlier today in the European region um, at the Hell Circuit with the Rallycross guys. Oh, and it might strike again as they make contact for Frosty and Kinchlow, but Kinchlow is the one who goes around. Ooh, and just barely sneaking by was Brophy and Chin. Oh, but Chin hits the wall, and that's going to send him into Barnes. Barnes survives it. And now Ryan Steele moves up into the advancing positions. Chin has fallen out along with Kinchlow. They might not get to the future. Go looking at Chin right now, and he just approaches this particular incident and has nowhere to go. And I can report that while we're watching this, Chin has absolutely muscled Lynn Kinchlow out of the way. 
so he hits the inside wall there and Brian Barnes gets sent over and as they continue going Joshua Chin just very harshly pushed Lynn Kinchler out of the way I can also report that Chris Tito made some contact with the inside wall he's fallen positions and here's Warling and Yatito as Yatito's trying to recover and catch back up to Warling. I think that was Hill in the 52 actually that got plugged up on the inside of the hairpin of four and just was going nowhere. He's down to seventh. We're watching Warling ahead of them now. These are the two that got positions over Hill coming off of turn seven. Three laps to go already for our drivers down into eight as they get it woed up, getting ready to start the next lap. Important to note that Travis Whirling was the one who visited the forest at the uh, center of turn four early on in this race, so he's doing a great job on his recovery drive. Yatito under pressure from Hill, who had his troubles at the center of four as well, so Hill and Yatito tucked in behind Whirling, trying to make progress. Good news for Warren is he will advance but Chen, who is in this one, is still sitting outside of the advancing positions, is absolutely chucking it in and getting into the side. Hill finds himself making contact with Yatito. Very hard contact between those two drivers. I'll see whether or not Hill sends out the inside of five. He's thinking about it. He's taking a little bit of a shallower line. Yatito's sliding the truck a little bit more, but able to keep the power down. Hill, look at this. They're both swapping a little bit of contact there just trying to hang on to these trucks. Hill, though, looking very calm and collected on the throttle of this Pro 2 truck. He looks very much like he's got that thing under control, Joe. Once again, he's going to try to get down to the inside, but Yatito's got the quicker line. If I could make a comparison, oh. if... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Joe. Joshua Chin is setting up the inside of Ryan Steele on turn seven for the final transfer position. He's done the over under and absolutely plugged up Ryan Steele. I'm not sure whether Ryan's going to take that lying down. Both really want to going to want to get through as we continue to watch the fight between Utito Hill and Thunhorst. They don't want to give this away either. They, if they wind up getting tangled with one another, they could easily be overtaken by guys like Chin and fall outside of those advancing positions. Coming up to the hairpin once again, Hill very deep into the corner. And is he gonna turn Yatito? No, he manages to just nudge him. Three wide coming off. They managed to come out the other side and is still Yatito leading. Absolutely, Trevor Vavrovsky had his trouble at the center of four, so he's lost some positions as well. But look at this battle as we continue going. Tito over Hill over Thunhorse as they make contact three wide out of four. I was going to say, if I could make a comparison, my impressions thus far have been if Formula One is a surgeon's knife, these things are a chainsaw. Absolutely, or a baseball bat to the head sometimes for some of these drivers is the amount of aggression that they're throwing into these corners in these Pro 2 trucks. Look at this. A great exit from Kevin Hill off of turn seven. Is he going to try and do the over-under on Yatito? He's going to send it up the inside. Yatito's going to cover him off. Oh, and once again, just saying hello to the back of the triple eight. He's trying to use that chrome horn, but it hasn't stuck yet. Final lap now for these drivers. Josh Edmondson leads with eight seconds over Keaton Swain. Connor Barry, another eight seconds behind with Andrew Waring, two seconds behind Barry. But this is where the battle is happening. More contact between Yatito and Hill. I think there's going to be more mint green than yellow on the rear of that car by the time this is over. They're coming down towards the hairpin once again. Does Hill do it once more? Drives to Thunhorse is going to try a shallow line to get power down off at the corner. They're going to exit wow. three wide again. But look at this, Yatito and Hill side by side. Yatito couldn't get the power down off the corner. Here we go through turn five. We might have to leave pretty soon. I'm keeping an eye on the leader. And as they come around turn five behind the buildings, he's got it. The 52 is ahead as we head to Edmondson, who wins the first heat of the Pro 2s by a whopping eight seconds. It is Keaton Swain who winds up coming home P2 and Connor Berry, despite having great performance in the Pro 4s, can't back it up in the 2s, but he still gets a podium. Absolutely. It looks like Kevin Hill's going to hang on to this over Yachito and Thunhorst. Uh, Joshua Chin able to cling to that final transfer spot himself. 
Of course, the race not over for these drivers. There's the three of Hill, Yatito, and Thunhorse crossing the line. Hill becoming the Paul Tracy of the pro trucks here in the majors. And uh, looks like our last advancing truck, Josh Chin missing the nose. So it's going to be Vavrosky, Kinchlo, Partridge, and Mickey who don't go through along with Roofs as well. Excuse me, Steele, the one not going through here. And the race results. We head off to the second heat of the night. Now that is going to be Cameron Peterson, Peterson starting on the pole. Nup will start to his side with Plumley in third. Then it is Mayer in P4. Challoner starts fifth today. Justin Morton in sixth, along with Crum in P7. Then it's Jeff Schmeyer in eighth, Driscoll ninth, and Stevenson rounding out your top ten. Nick Coon's going to start off in 11th with Brian McGreevy in 12th. Isaac Snyder 13th today with Wayne Hutchison starting off 14th. And Jason Wallet starting off 15th with Cody Retzlaff back there in 16th position. Rob Powers rounding out your 17 trucks for this heat. 12 transfer. Last time was much more frantic and aggressive than what we saw on the Pro 4 trucks. Will we see a repeat as everybody is now out on the grid? The lights are up. And the green flag is out. And I think there was another jump behind them. Not sure who it was, but I think it was a yellow truck as everybody now accelerates down towards the first corner. Pedersen gets himself the clear air behind him, not managing to sneak ahead of the nine of Morton. Absolutely major contact between McGreevy and Steve Driscoll in the 89 51 trucks behind. But look at this side by side battle. Nup's going to look, look at the inside of Peterson there for the position. Justin Morton trying to hang on to third from Kurt Crumb, who's around the outside. So far, so good behind them. Now down into turn seven. Still racing side by side for all the positions behind. Three wide for fifth place. And Meyer looks like he's going to claim that battle for the time being but I don't think it's over as they hit turn eight. Very, very intense driving. Everyone diving it very deep into turn eight. Now starting officially the first lap as they cross the line. Still three wide up there for that position of sixth place. Almost four wide as they're coming up and approaching turns two and three. This has got to get sorted out soon. This gets pretty narrow up into here. And it looks like Meyer still with the advantage in fourth. Once again, four wide coming off the turn. And it narrows down to three as they start to pick up pace. Stevenson to the outside of Plumley. Oh, but he clips the grass. He starts to lose control. Plumley as well as they bang doors. Can everybody make it through the hairpin? Yes, and barely. Oh, still side by side, more banging doors between the 53 and 137. The 137 almost going off track on the outside. The 53 of Mark Stevenson up the inside of the 137 of Christopher Plumley as they go through turn five. That's Christian Chowder back there in the eighth position. He's lost a couple spots from his starting position. After making contact, he almost loses it as he goes over the jump into six. Manages just barely to hold on as we watch Stevenson and uh, Plumley. now we switch back to Schaliner. That's Driscoll behind him. Christian can't lose too many more spots, he'll, or he'll go outside of the advancing positions as a number of chain reaction contacts between the drivers and seven. Look at all of this contact as everyone going through turn eight. More contact up there between Christopher Plumley and Kurt Crum as they're making contact. There's a big wreck in the background. Cody Retzlaff is over on his roof. Oh, no. And one of our specialists gets sent to the back. I'm not sure even he can climb up from there. Here's the contact is coming into set to into eight. Everyone just stacking up here. Red Slap just getting stuck in uh, up against the wall and then flipped over by the 19 truck of Nick Coon. Going to need a U-Haul for that truck afterwards just to carry it around. I don't think it's going to be rolling after that, at least not in the same way that we just witnessed. Let's go back to Plumley because his fight with uh, Stevenson is not over. And Stevenson gets the better run, but he's shallow once again as Plumley tries to cut underneath, but he'll be on the outside coming into turn six, the way outside. And unfortunately, he finds himself blocked into the corner. No, he somehow cuts underneath, finds the grip, and the, the race continues. 
These two guys are absolutely nose to tail side to side as they go through the corner. Look at this, Stevenson very deep through the corner. Plumley's just gonna plug him up there. A little bit of front nose to rear contact there. Plumley able to hold off Stevenson making that pass work through seven. Great job, here comes Stevenson up the side, gonna put some contact oh. in. That's gonna slow them both up along Kurt Crumb to come alongside. Crumb says, thank you very much. I'll snatch that one up as Christian Challenger nearly gets involved with a 53 and has to back out of it. It's gonna try and cut back to the other side. Now into turn three, the long way around. Can the momentum go in his favor? It does, and he finds a lane. Just barely finds the lane. He's being forced into the dirt. Look at him. He's riding the berm on the outside, able to swap it over here. Got to try and go up the inside of Mark Stevenson as they go through four more contact between the two of them. They exit the corner <laughs> side by side. He uses the 53 to turn the truck, and I think it actually worked. He's got a nose ahead. He's got the outside line, which is going to turn to the inside next time through. The 53 sliding out wide, a little bit more of rubbing between them shallow into the corner, but he's got the desired line. Challenger fighting desperately for this seventh place, and he's got it. I can see the grins a mile wide on all these drivers included in this battle. Stevenson really struggling to keep control of that truck as Steve Driscoll sends it deep up the inside on Stevenson. He's going to get that position done as well. Uh, Stevenson just falling backward now, just can't seem to get the momentum going in that Pro 2 truck. It was as high as fifth. He's now down to ninth place. As Challenger gets a little tip from the five as Driscoll, excuse me, the fifth, 51 rather, nearly turns him around. Finally, it looks like they're getting that one sorted out. We haven't been missing anything up at the front. Pedersen still leads up by about eight tenths, though they remain relatively close. There have been no challenges. Isaac Snyder is currently in the final transfer spot. He's a good four seconds ahead of Jason Wallet, who's in 13th. So he's not under threat either. But as we continue to watch these battles, yeah, Cameron Pedersen up to an eight tenth of a second lead over Nup. Uh, third place is still contested between Justin Norton and Ryan Meyer in the nine and nine one five trucks. They're still having their own battle. So we watch this group come down into the next corner, Crumb. Still ahead, woo, very close to that tire on the outside for the one of Christian Schallner. He's got to be careful if he clips oh, that. Oh, Schmeier's up over on his roof. Schmeier's out. Jeff Schmeier, who is in the 11th position, has flipped it coming through turn five. He did exactly what I was just describing. He goes way too wide. There's a tire on the outside to cover off the inside of the short course. just goes into a death roll, unfortunately, and has to take a tow. Now this gap between Nup and Pedersen is starting to narrow half a second. Remember, it, there, it was eight tenths before, so I'm not sure if we got a mistake from Cam or if Luke is just starting to put the pedal down. I think Luke's starting to put some pressure on Cam here. Luke's, wow, Luke very, very loose coming through turn four. Almost gets it to point it towards that, towards, towards the forest on the inside of that corner. But look at this, Cameron Pedersen putting some speed down. Nup looking towards the inside of that corner. You can see just how close he got the nose of the truck to the inside, carrying a lot more speed through five. Here they go through six. Nup getting that truck very sideways. He's gonna make some contact. Just use the rear of that truck to push through. Oh, Pedersen, please don't have more connection issues. We know he had that during the four, the, um, the Pro Fours race, which actually cost him points in that race. But Nup definitely doesn't want to win the race that way. By the way, the other thing that Schmeier's role has done has made the battle between Retzlaff and Wallet now the battle for the final advancing spot. But I think Retzlaff is the one that's come out the better of that because he's starting to pull away from him. There you can see he might just barely squeak in. Well, we'll find out. He's got about 1.5 seconds on Wallet and he's gained about a second last lap. So he's in a pretty decent position. But Retzlaff is going to have some work to do in the in the feature if he wants to get up into those top point spanning positions. Yeah, but as as we saw last time in the fours, that things go crazy at the start. As long as he stays out of trouble, he can make up a lot of spots. However, only one spot being contested between these two. That is the lead. Pedersen ahead of Nup, and he's been getting close in a few corners, not everywhere. 
but here and there, he's poking his nose. He'll have three to go at the line. It's gonna start to run out of opportunities. Yeah, when you get these guys going side by, go, going nose to tail like this, with the amount of precision that these drivers who race this regularly have, it ends up looking a lot like figure skating, like, uh, like the couples figure skating. It's so amazing to watch these two drivers go at it. Now, this is the closest he's been to Pedersen actually through this section. So let's see what he's gonna do to try and affect a pass. Look at this Pedersen going a little bit neutralized through that corner. Couldn't get the power down quite as well, but Nup couldn't get the power down either. And these extra jumps are making him lose momentum. He couldn't quite get enough speed going before he hit those jumps to maintain the gap to Pedersen. Pedersen with a much better line into turn three this time around, able to get some speed down and gap Nup. This is figure skating. They must be wearing hockey gear out there and they have been using it every chance they can, just beating on one another, coming around the hairpin of four. Nup's been unable to get by Pedersen, despite being right on top of him in a few spots. This might be the place where he needs to be closer, I think. We've seen a few drivers make great moves coming through five down into six, but he's not been very close each and every time we come through there. Yeah, I think what's going on with Nup is that he's trying to figure out his way to close in for that last lap battle. So he's got two more laps after this one to try and sort this out and get close enough to move Pedersen coming into one of these corners. So he's just testing out different lines, testing out different strategies, going to try and set up Pedersen coming into the final lap. Now, granted, this is a heat race, so there's really not much of a benefit of trying to take that advantage and take that that uh, first spot away. It's just a, you know, a couple dozen feet uh, on the starting grid for the feature. But as we've seen in the last couple races, that couple dozen feet could make all the difference. Down into three once again. And I almost wonder if he needs to start focusing on those corner exits. You keep seeing him come in shallow, try the bottom line, and it just doesn't look like it is working. Into turn four one more time, follows his rival good. right through. That was a really good line four and up there, making his way through the corner. Pedersen a little bit less efficient there, as Pedersen looking like he might be having a little bit more connection issues once again, but Nup right up on his rear bumper. Here they go through the sweeping turn six as they take the jump that begins turn six as they go around climbing over this hill they drop down once again over yet another jump that takes them out towards the sharp hairpin of turn seven this corner feels so slow by the time you get here Pedersen quite a bit out uh, um, with his rear end quite a bit out enough actually couldn't get the truck rotated that time around but seemed to benefit him a little bit more, staying a little bit more straight. But here they go through eight once again. Yet another very sharp hairpin. Nup with a good opportunity here. If he could get a good exit, but the truck is not cooperating. He puts a little bit too much throttle into it. Ends up not getting that truck to turn the way he wants to. Now he seems a little bit offline as they sweep through one, two, and now up to turn three. Last time we saw the chrome horn play a part with some of our drivers. Will it be another case of Luke Nup having to try and get Pedersen nudged around just enough to break traction on him? He doesn't through turn four. He's gonna have to get closer than that. Half a lap to go. He's definitely close enough to try something into six, but it's gonna have to be a desperate and speedy move. He's gonna have to really send it over this jump that comes right before turn six as Pedersen tries to slow it down here. Here we go. He does send it as deep as he can. He's gonna try and get to that rear bumper, but can't quite do it. Can't move Pedersen, can't slow down his momentum. He's gonna have a couple more opportunities. A desperate move into seven or eight could also help him do it. But look at this Pedersen down to the inside. He doesn't want anything to do with it. Yeah, but the cutback for the 177 is gonna get him a launch. Remember, we saw two of our leaders come together here in turn eight and barely separated at the line as they fly through. The 177 gets the launch, but it's too little, too late. Pedersen wins the second heat. Nup in second. Morton is very close to Meyer, but he's going to be able to keep the podium. Meyer with fourth. Plumley into P5. And then Crum is just ahead of Challoner. 
Uh, then we've got Steve Driscoll in eighth and Mark Stevenson ninth. Then we've got Brian McGreevy and Isaac Snyder who are very close together coming through the final corner. But Brian McGreevy is going to hang on to that one. Snyder in 11th and then it's Retzlaff. I believe. Last one through. Yeah. So Wallet, Hutchison, Kuhn, Schmeyer, and Powers will be your drivers that will not continue racing this evening. The last of the points being given out here in just a moment. As you see the rest of your results, we go to the feature now in the Pro 2s. And up at the top of it, it is going to be Josh Edmondson on the pole, Cameron Pedersen in second, followed by Keaton Swain in third. Luke Nupp starts fourth, followed by Connor Berry in fifth and Justin Morton in sixth. Andrew Waring in seventh is flanked by May Meyer next to him, Warling in ninth and Plumley in 10th. Kevin Hill's going to start off in 11th with Kurt Crum in 12th. Chris Yatito is going to start off 13th. Christian Challenger back at 14th for this feature race. Mar Matthew Thunhorse in 15th. 16th is Steve Driscoll. Jason Brophy 17th. Mark Stevenson 18th. 19th is Brian Barnes and Brian McGreevy in the 20th position. Trevor Favrowski, Isaac Snyder, Joshua Chin, and Cody Retzlaff are going to round out all of your racers in this 24 truck field. Here we go. The lights are up and the green flag is out. Edmondson off decently, but a few to his outside. Looked like they have a decent run as well. Heading down towards the fourth, first corner. A few trucks actually getting into one another on the straight. Are we going to be able to make it through this one clean? No, somebody gets turned around in the background and goes over. Steve Driscoll, who's gone around more contact between truck drivers in the back. That's Cody Retzlaff, Keaton Swain, Jason Brophy, Mark Stevenson. Everyone's flipping over in the background. A huge, huge wreck, and they're still crashing. Oh, my goodness. Well, up at the front, Yatito, uh, or excuse me, uh, rather, Meyer still leads. Somehow he snuck in front of everyone. Plumley there in the 137. Behind him, down into turn eight. Fewer trucks than we expected managing to come across the line to officially start the first lap. In fact, it looks like only about 20 of them. Absolutely, but our dri our regular drivers who are in the best positions are Andrew Waring and Travis Worling, sixth and eighth position. They were able to survive all of that mess, but right now our leader is Ryan Meyer out there in front of Christopher Plumley, Josh Edmondson, Andrew Waring, and Cameron Peterson. Meyer way to the outside, starting from eighth, just had a magnificent launch, got himself in there. Look at them fan out down through the hairpin. A few of them coming together, but otherwise everybody managing to point the right direction. Absolutely. So Christian Challenger, our current points leader, is down in 11th position. He's going to be losing quite a bit of points throughout this, this race, considering he didn't finish super well in the last feature either. So it'll be very interesting to see how the points play out at the end of this race. But right now, such tense battling up there for the 8th position, actually. Sorry, for the 6th position between Justin Morton and Connor Berry. They're side by side as they head towards 7, almost 3 wide. Yeah, Andrew Waring right now is the best position championship-wise. You see them come around the corner because it is uh, Challoner and uh, Waring, who are, or excuse me, or Chin, who are farther back, dealing with all the craziness in there. Oh, getting pinched to the inside, coming through turn eight. I don't think there's been a race, Joe, where Joshua Chin has not lost his front bumper, and he almost pushes Kevin Hill over the wall as they go through turn eight once again. But look at this over-under that we're seeing on screen right now. Very close racing up there for the lead. That is indeed. And that's Meyer being overtaken by Edmondson. As he comes down into turn four, does Meyer try and shove him out of the way? No, he's gonna keep it tidy. Down to the inside, doesn't get the launch behind them. It is a three-way battle for third, Plumley, Pedersen, Waring. Very close racing up here at the lead, look at this. That's Ryan Meyer trying to take a little bit of an inside line, trying to get to the rear bumper of Edmondson, can't quite do so. Is he gonna try and send it deep into six? No, he's not. Redmondson, very, very smooth on the gas there, but look at that Plumley sliding it through. So is Pedersen and Waring. Waring starting to fall off the back of this battle for second position. Plumley and Pedersen are gonna go side by side as they head towards turn seven. Pedersen down to the inside. But can he get the launch off? He gets underneath the 137, but cutting back under Plumley fights back. He's going to be on the wrong side, coming into turn eight. Will he pull 
the same move all over again. He's going to try. He gets pitched down to the bottom, and he can't get the speed. Oh, and a shove to boot. I'm going to give an opportunity to Andrew Warren to try and come up the inside, but he can't quite do so. This lead battle between Edmonton and Myers, very tense between those drivers as well. They've got a lap track of Mark Stevenson, who's really fallen off the back of this battle. Um, he's now up ahead of these guys as well. And we've had a wreck in the backfield. Brian McGreevy actually has gone around. He's now recovered and going back in the straight line. This race has turned out to be complete chaos, Joe. Yeah, that was Driscoll who nearly turned him over. And uh, they're able to get it going, though. Up at the front, look at this between Pedersen and Meyer down into the corner. So close coming through turn five and into six for P2. Meyer to the inside, cutting underneath. Pedersen's going to try and get the speed. He does, and he's got the desired line. That was absolutely beautiful from Pedersen. He set that up all the way back at turn five. Look at this. That's Ryan Meyer off track there, and that's side by side behind them between Waring and Plumley as well. Plumley around the outside, Waring to the inside. It'll switch hands. No, Waring doesn't have the speed. Is he going to try and chuck it in? He does. Turns the 137 around. They bang wheels into the inside wall. Waring can barely hold on to it. He's got the spot and he's going to chop off Plumley. Yeah, no love loss between those two drivers. Waring is trying to compete for a championship here in the major series. Plumley is a driver who we haven't seen race in the pro split yet this season. But look at this Plumley with a better exit. He's going to get to the rear bumper here of Waring. He's going to look to the inside as they head towards four. And Waring gave him the go ahead. He didn't like how he took that position. He's going to let Plumley through, but he might have to let two through because there goes Nup. But Nup is too hot and they'll cut right underneath him. Really beautiful racing from everyone right now. A lot of contact between these drivers, but everyone trying to be as respectful as they possibly can. Nup, though, is looking for his opportunity to try and get up there into that fourth spot. He knows he's faster on raw pace than Waring and Plumley, but he gets a little bit close to the berm. He's able to save it there. Still looking up the inside. Here comes Justin Morton in that nine truck, though, to try and join this battle. Ooh, touch with the wall from Waring. That slowed him up. Does Nup try and chuck it to the inside of him? Yes, he does. He likes it, and he's going to Park it there. Slide job from the 177. No, getting underneath him afterwards. Warren, where did he come from? Gonna try and do it again. He's gonna set it up the inside, try and park that rear bumper in front of Warring. Warring trying to do this as well. Looks like Steve Driscoll has had it off. He's unfortunately gonna take a toe. But look at this. Now, off to that fifth position, giving up that top five. Holy cow, this is some great racing. Now, Warren's got to be careful. He's only two positions ahead of Challoner now. He doesn't want to bleed too many more because Challoner is the main one he's trying to fight with. And Chin is back in 11th as well, though. He's got more ground between himself and those two. So ooh, as, uh, coming in the corner, did you see the truck of Warren climb the hill there? We clipped that outside berm just a little bit, was able to maintain control of that truck, fortunately. But Waring looking a little bit worse for wear in that machine. Justin Morton putting some heavy pressure on with his dirt expertise that he's got in a couple of other disciplines that don't include the trucks necessarily. But Justin starting to show that he's got that knack for the dirt here as Waring going wide through turn six. Justin Morton's going to look up the inside. They're going to be side by side as they head over the jump towards seven. Uh, but he gets the launch off the turn. Morton. Is going to have to try again later. We hop on board with him. You can see them taking a tighter line off the corner of the Nup ahead. And Nup is going to streak away because of that. Warren tries to defend to the inside as Morton looking to use that cushion. Ah, but the Mint car is parked there. Chowner, though, as Waring is backing up Morton, if Chowner is able to climb that one more position, that's going to be not much of a points loss for Chowner on the day. It might bring them a little bit closer together because I think Waring finished better than Chowner in the last uh, feature. But look at this. Everyone getting really close together. And Connor Berry is recovering well. He's up to ninth position and about to try and put Chowner down a lap. But we see Mark Stevenson, the lap truck up ahead of Andrew Waring right now as they go into turn four. Oh, Chowder almost goes around. Oh, he, uh, thankfully for him, had Barry to bounce off of, but unthankful for Connor. He's able to keep going. That just got a little awkward for a brief moment. Stevenson going to stay off to the side. 
Oh, Luke Combs making a pass on Christopher Plumley now through six. He took it over the jump. Plumley's going to try and do the over under here. There's Nup on screen trying to slide that thing through the corner. Here's Plumley trying to take it back up the inside, but Plumley actually backs out of it a little bit. Let's Nup go through. Looked like a bad jump there for the 137 for a moment. The truck going sideways on him. Thankfully, did not roll over as they come up and over the jump into turn eight. And something has happened to Roski, it seems, as he is in pit lane. So, looks like Nup now into fourth, but he's got three and a half seconds to get up to Meyer onto the podium and only three laps to do it. Definitely got time, but he's got some work to do. Meyer, Pedersen, and Edmondson are all specialists in these trucks, so it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as easy to get up there. Plumley also is a specialist, but he had that bad jump like you talked about, Joe. But it's really close still between Morton and Waring behind these guys for six. As we hop on board with Justin Morton now, just behind Andrew Waring, and Waring got a very poor exit at first. Finally, the truck decides to go. And just as Warren maybe, or Morton maybe thought he had a shot, that Mint 336 is in front of him once again. Absolutely beautiful. Look at these guys manhandling these trucks as they go over the jump that is the entrance to turn six. Warren goes a little bit deep again, but he's out in that soft dirt, which should give him some pretty decent purchase as they head towards seven. Morton can't get that truck straightened out. Warren's still gonna have the advantage. Did a great job playing defense right now and as they come down towards turn eight i think we had a pass between barnes and uh whirling yeah whirling got himself into 12th position with a nice little move don't need to go back there as we see them come across the line starting lap eight now oh and actually brian barnes sends travis whirling around in turn eight and he's apologized over the radio immediately. Warling falls down to 15th, sadly. Here's the replay. So I think Brian, I think he was a little bit upset, uh, Brian Barnes was, about the pass that Joshua Chin made on him in six. He just gets too deep into the corner and ends up sending around the 90 truck. So the 90 truck, unfortunately, having to recover, he's now quite a ways back in these guys. A lot of places lost and not many laps to try and make them up. There you see him down in 13th, excuse me, 15th rather. The closest battle we still have is for sixth and seventh. And these are those two. That's Warring in the 336 Morton in the nine. Absolutely, and as these guys are going through turn seven, Josh Edmondson, our leader, is going through turn eight to take the white flag. He's been out in front ever since he's made that what, that move on the land rush. So Edmondson doing a good job leading this race over Cameron Pedersen, Ryan Meyer, Luke Knupp, and then we've got Christopher Plumley, and then we've got this battle for six between Andrew Waring and Justin Morton. And you know who's wanting them to battle even more is Christian Challoner because he's suddenly arrived on the scene right behind them. There you see it now. If they keep fighting as hard as they have, I suspect that Christian's going to try and snatch these spots up, especially if he can get by Warren, his main rival here. Absolutely an opportunity for Christian Challoner to make some positions. He's hoping that Justin Morton's going to send it deep into four. Let's see what Morton does. Morton's going to play it nice and clean here. All of them going to take a normal line, but Warren, this is his weakest corner. and. Justin Morton's trying to take advantage of that. Still can't quite get the exit that he wants, but it's really close. Let's see what he does in the five. Down Five down. Yeah, just a little bit of a nudge. Is that enough to put him off? He's going to look to the inside. He's going to chuck it to the inside. This might come to contact between them. No, he's given space. And we're going to have to cut away, unfortunately, because Edmondson into turn eight is going to run a smooth and professional race up at the front to take victory in the Pro 2s here and the Crandon World Cup behind him. Patterson with second and Meyer with third. Here's the battle for sixth place. It's still really tight here. Christian Chalmers is going to try and send it up the inside of Justin Morton in the final corner. Contact between everyone. I think it's going to come out the way they went in, though. Warring over Morton and Challenger. Connor Berry comes home at ninth. Wow, great stuff there. Hill managed to wind up in 10th today as the rest of them come through and actually had 21 drivers on the lead lap for this one. 
I believe this will take us to a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews, so stick around. Welcome back to Crandon International Raceway for the Pro 2 Trucks. It was Josh Edmondson who wound up the winner as we watch the replay of the wreck that happened at the start. Driscoll up and over the barriers, unfortunately, at the very beginning, as plenty of others. And you'll have lots to look at, even in the slow-mo, as you watch and see what happened for the feature race the pro two of the crandon world cup more in the background going over pedersen wound up in second place as meyer was p3 with lake uh, luke nub in p4 exactly where he started interestingly enough plumley uh wound up fifth starting from 10th place and it was andrew warren in the sixth spot it was justin morton managing his seventh and christian challenger uh, just sized his way through that wreck at the start to get a valuable eighth place. Connor Berry was ninth and Kevin Hill was 10th. Then we got, then we got Joshua Chin in 11th position with Brian Barnes finishing 12th. Kurt Crum is going to come home in 13th with Cody Retzlaff after getting involved in that early wreck coming home in 14th position. Travis Warling having to settle for 15th after being in the top uh, six at the beginning of that race after the wreck. Isaac Snyder coming home in 16th position with Matthew Thunforce down in 17th spot. Keaton Swain, not the greatest race in the Pro 2s, coming home in 18th with Brian McGreevy 19th and Jason Brophy in 20th. 21st went to Yatito, last one on the lead lap with Stevenson, Driscoll, and Fofrosky, the last of them. We're going to be talking to Josh Edmondson here about his race in the Pro 2s and 
He certainly had to at least work for it in this feature because Josh, coming out of that first corner, you weren't the leader. Yeah, yeah, I had to work for that one for sure. That was uh, it was a lot of fun. So when you saw that, what was going through your head? Did you know what you had to do from there? And, and were you familiar racing with Cam? For sure. Yeah, Cam and I are actually teammates on uh, Jim Beaver Esports and same with Connor Berry there. So we, we drive together a lot, uh, work on setups together. And then obviously we're, we're really into these trucks. So, you know, we race against each other a lot uh, uh, in them. So, yeah, definitely familiar with those guys and Luke and, and Keaton and those guys. Uh, we, we race a lot, so. Well, this is such a, a, a niche in iRacing. It, it doesn't see nearly as much as uh, participation as, as some other disciplines, but it's have to say we've had a lot of fun watching it. Knowing that, I mean, having seen what some of the other drivers can do out here, do you feel like there's potential for some of them to try and take part in more of these races? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I personally think it's the most fun racing on iRacing. I mean, I enjoy uh, oval and some other stuff too, but uh, for me, it's it's just the most fun. Uh, the racing you get to do side by side, sliding and everything. I just think it's a blast. Um, yeah, so hopefully, uh, you know, the majors putting on this big race will uh, get some more guys into it and and get that participation to grow. The winners here and the majors is a very select group to be able to do this. Uh, anybody you want to thank for this achievement? Yeah, just uh, shout out you guys for uh, putting this broadcast on. Looking forward to to go back and watch it. And Mike and the majors for putting on the cool event. And then, uh, yeah, I got to thank my team, Jim Beaver Esports, uh, Fistful of Bourbon, Winners Get Whiskey, and uh, General Tire, Polaris Razor, Dirtfish, Acronis, GST XTB Axles, uh, Sans Racing Fabrication, Rigid Industries, Vision Wheels, and everybody else. Thank you. That was our winner in the Pro 2s, Josh Edmondson, second in that class was Cam Pet uh, Pedersen as Adam has caught up with him. Yeah, Cam, coming out of the land rush in P6, you had a lot of work to do to get yourself up to that P2. Talk to me about your feature race here. Yeah, that was a blast. Um, didn't have the start I wanted on uh, that second lane on the or third, second, fourth, fifth. All those lanes, they don't really hook up as well as the outside lanes do. And uh, just spun a bit of, spun some tires on the landing of one of those small jumps on, those, on that straightaway and uh, collided with some with somebody, I'm not sure who, and got some damage in the front fender, but uh, not able to work myself up, up a second, and uh, follow my teammate Josh into, uh, into the finish line. Absolutely, and you guys being teammates, uh, you guys clearly race these trucks quite often. Um, what do you think, uh, what kind of advice can you give to some of these major drivers uh, coming out of this race if they're going to continue in this discipline in the future? Uh, I'd definitely just be working on uh, driving techniques and driving style over setup. Uh, your setup will only get you so much, but um, if you're driving, that'll keep you consistent. And uh, you know, the setup's not gonna move your own truck around other people. So, you know, you gotta do that yourself. So, you know, put as many laps as you can in, in the seat and uh, just don't blame the setup. Absolutely, and did you like this kind of format with the Pro 4s and the Pro, uh, Pro 2s uh, as far as the heats and the feature races were concerned? Yeah, I, I enjoy this kind of style. Um, our team, Jim Beaver Esports, have put on events like this before, and I think it works out really well. And, uh, you know, having that changeover from the Pro 4 right to the Pro 2, I know they're both big, heavy trucks, but they drive so differently, and it's always a challenge to transfer from one truck to the other. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, the next one. Um, I'm not sure when you're putting it on, but I think I'll be here. Well, thanks, Cam. Is there anyone you want to thank before we let you go? Absolutely. You guys for putting this on, major series. Um, my teams or my teammates, uh, Josh and Connor of uh, Jimmy Resports, uh, General Tire, Fistful of Bourbon, uh, uh, Polaris Razor, Vision Wheel, uh, Sant Racing Fabrication, Chris Leona's Motorsport Drop, uh, Rigid Industries, Dirtfish, GSP, XTP Axles, Gibson Performance Exhaust, Acronis, and everyone watching right now. Thanks for talking to us, Cam. That was Cameron Peterson, who finished in second place. And Joe's caught up with Ryan Meyer, our third place finisher in the Pro 2 feature race. Yeah, Ryan, you were the one that suddenly had that magnificent run off the line, cut around the outside. I asked Josh what he was thinking when he saw that. What were you thinking when you found yourself in that position? I was definitely expecting to be chasing someone, and all of a sudden I'm just chasing the track. Um, the outside line on these... Uh, Crandon starts is definitely preferred when you get onto the actual track rather than the grass. And uh, I guess I just had a, a lucky uh, grid position there. 
It all worked out, but then suddenly you had some fast drivers trying to overtake you. Is third really realistically the, the best you feel you could finish, or do you think you could have had something for those top two? Fortunately, I uh, my time slots don't match up to uh, practice with these guys and officials. Um, I would love to race with these guys. Um, this is uh, a lot of fun driving the Pro 2, especially, and uh, I think I'm very happy with third place with how many... Uh, regulars were in this race yeah i i think i'd be pretty pleased with that as well been a busy day for you or, all right would you consider yourself a, a bit of a dirt fiend here considering you've taken part in, in multiple for the majors oh for sure dirt is uh is my love um <laughs> the uh the other two races this weekend uh went pretty well um yeah i uh showed my stuff i guess well, hopefully we'll get to see a little more from you on the pavement uh, as the season goes on. Anybody you want to thank for a podium? Uh, the major series for uh, putting this on. Um, Bombshell Motorsports, uh, my team, uh, or the team that I uh, race the European region in, um, in the majors. And um, yeah, that's about it. That was Ryan Meyer, who finished third here today. Up next, we have our second place finisher in the Pro Fours. It is Luke Nup. Yeah, second place in the Pro Fours and uh, fourth place in the Pro Twos. Luke, you had a lot of work to do to get yourself up to fourth place in the Pro Twos, but talk to me about that battle that you had with Barry in the Pro Four trucks. That seemed to be a very intense battle between you guys. Yeah, it was a super fun race. Um, I knew I would have more speed in the Pro Four than the Pro Two, and um, really just showed it in that um, by winning my heat and then had a really good start in the race and just tried to follow in behind Connor and make a smart pass. I never wanted to make contact with him and move him out of the way. I would rather finish second than throw him out of the way for the win. So um, exactly just held it right behind him and um, ended up having a gnarly battle with him and ended up second. Absolutely. And concerning the fact that um, I believe that you race on dirt quite often um, in uh, in real life, how does that transfer? How does those skills transfer over to the simulator? Oh, it's really nice how um, it really helps having all the skills from real life with the dirt um, throttle control, importantly, and just trying not to um, overwork the steering wheel. You want to really be smooth like an oval car and go karting and that's really what helps is just easy on the throttle and then um, easy on the steering wheel. And um, I think that's what carries me into from real life into this. Absolutely. And um, is this your first race in the majors? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. So what'd you think about the format and the, the, uh, the class of the field, uh, the kind of uh, driver performances today? Um, it was really fun actually. Um, I knew that the main um, dirt guys that, like, considering me, Peterson, um, Edmondson, Barry, um, Swain, Plumley, we all do all the big leagues for the off-road trucks. And I knew we were going to come in and kind of um, do better than all these guys because I know these guys are main road guys and mainly oval. And But it really surprised me with how well the other drivers did that aren't usually um doing the off-road trucks so it was definitely an awesome field and uh, i hope uh, major series does more well thanks for talking to us luke is there anyone you want to thank before we let you go um for sure my uh, whole team factory sim sport um we really put the time in getting the setup dialed for this and then all the key and swain for helping me as well with the pro 2 he's really helped me um get it better in it and then all my actual sponsors ultra wheels appliance parts the company justice brothers bf goodrich um Everyone else, thank you guys. All right, thanks for talking to us, Luke, and we hope to see you more in the future. That was Luke Nup, our fourth place finisher in the Pro 2s and second place in the Pro 4 feature race. Back to you, Joe. Good performance from him, for sure. Hope we see a little bit more from him in the majors in the future as that is going to wrap us up. So we want to give a big thank you uh, to the majors for the charity once again that they had for this, the Alzheimer's Association. And if you would like to donate or find out more, we've got a link in the description below. Also, a thank you to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast that you see listed here on your screen. Additional thanks to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. You can see the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Adam, Sean, and Dougie. 
You can find out more about GSRC at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com or through our social media listed on the screen. Also check out our merchandise store at SimRacingMerch.com slash GSRC. We keep a link in the description below for that as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a moment because coming next month is the next race, the 2.4 Hours of Spa. That'll be Sunday, August 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. Until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.